Welcome to the eighth video in a series of tutorials on EPA Method 334.0, Expectations for Public Water Systems in Pennsylvania. In this video, you will learn about the Method 334.0 requirements for online analyzers, including analyzer startup procedures, analyzer initial verification, the instrument IDC for online analyzers, and comparative grab sampling requirements. In addition to the requirements discussed in this video, all of the Method 334.0 requirements outlined in the Grab Sample Methodology videos also apply to systems using online analyzers. All samplers conducting comparative grab sampling must complete the Analyst IDC, and all handheld or benchtop meters used for comparative grab sampling must complete the initial calibration verification, as well as ongoing routine calibration verifications. The online analyzer requirements apply to all online instruments that are used for regulatory compliance monitoring or for calculating login activation. Online analyzers must be installed and plumbed according to manufacturer instructions. Pressures and flows must be within specifications and all required components must be present. Routine maintenance is critical. Reagents for colorimetric analyzers must be appropriate, valid, and installed correctly. Probes for amperometric units must be installed properly and maintained according to manufacturer recommendations. Critical components such as feed lines, reagent tubes, and sample cells must be in good operating condition. Once the analyzer has been properly installed, the next step is to verify the factory programmed calibration curve. This can be completed using one of two methods. An aqueous primary check standard can be prepared at a known concentration. The analyzer reading of the standard can then be compared to the reference standard concentration for comparison. A second option is to perform a comparative grab sample using an EPA-approved grab sample method. Each of the methods in this table is acceptable for comparative grab sampling as long as the analyst has completed the IDC and the meter is compliance with initial and routine calibration verification requirements. According to Method 334.0, the acceptance criteria for comparative grab sampling is that the online analyzer reading must be within plus or minus 0.1 mg per liter or plus or minus 15% of the grab sample result, whichever is larger. Because the grab method is EPA approved and both the analyst and equipment have been evaluated using primary standards, we can be confident in the results obtained through the grab sample analysis. A grab result of 0.95 mg per liter is the threshold between the two acceptance criteria. For grab samples less than 0.95 mg per liter, plus or minus 0.1 mg per liter provides a larger range than plus or minus 15%. When the grab sample result is greater than or equal to 0.95 mg per liter, plus or minus 15% is the larger range. For comparative grab sample collection, the sample port should be as close as possible to where sample enters the analyzer to ensure a representative grab sample. Avoid waste streams and overflow lines due to potential contamination, dilution, or degradation of water quality. The sample port should be located such that it minimizes pressure or flow fluctuations which can interfere with the operation of the analyzer. Grab samples should be collected in a clean, chlorine demand-free vessel and analyzed according to the method protocol. Document all comparative grab sample results. For documentation, use the DEP form for comparative grab sample analysis for online analyzers. All of DEP's Method 334.0 forms can be found on eLibrary. Begin by completing the general information at the top. Record your PWS ID, system name, the current month and year, and the online analyzer manufacturer, model, serial number, and location. Also record the grab sample analysis method, manufacturer, and model number of the grab analyzer, and the most recent routine calibration verification of the grab analyzer. Now let's look at the bottom of the form, which is where you will record your comparison analysis. Record the date and time of comparative grab sampling, the grab sample result, and the online analyzer reading at the time the grab sample was collected. Next, record the calculated result for the difference between the grab sample and online analyzer measurements, a yes or no to indicate if the applicable acceptance criterion was met, any actions taken in the event the applicable criterion was not met, and the initials of the operator who conducted the comparative sampling. 
Let's look at how to complete the calculation to determine if follow-up action is necessary. A is the result of the grab sample analysis, which will act as the basis for comparison. B is the online analyzer reading at the time of grab sample collection. If the grab sample result is less than 0.95 mg per liter, calculate the difference in concentration by subtracting the grab result from the online reading B minus A. If the grab result is greater than or equal to 0.95 mg per liter, calculate the percent difference by finding the difference, dividing by the grab result A, and then multiplying by 100. Be sure to record if the difference or percent difference is negative. A negative percent difference indicates a result that is less than the grab result, while a positive percent difference is greater than the grab result. This is valuable information to track as your analyzer ages, and you can try to identify trends that may indicate that the calibration curve is shifting. If the difference or percent difference is within the applicable range of plus or minus 0.1 mg per liter, or plus or minus 15%, no additional action is necessary. If the appropriate acceptance criterion is not met, follow-up action is required. We will look more closely at follow-up actions in a minute. The Analyzer Initial Demonstration of Capability, or IDC, is used to assess the suitability of an analyzer for chlorine residual analysis under specific water quality and operating conditions. The IDC must be completed prior to using an analyzer for compliance monitoring or to obtain results used to calculate log inactivation. It requires the collection of daily comparative grab samples using an approved grab sample method, which has completed all of the Method 334.0 grab method requirements. A minimum of 14 consecutive days of grab analyses are required to complete the IDC. In situations where plant operation is not continuous, 14 consecutive business days or operating days is acceptable. All comparative grab sample results during the IDC must be recorded regardless of whether they meet the applicable acceptance criteria. Use the DEP form for the initial demonstration of capability for online analyzers for documentation. This and all of DEP's Method 334.0 forms can be found on eLibrary. Begin by completing the general information at the top. This information is identical to the top of the Comparative Grab Sample Analysis form. Use the bottom of the form to record your comparison analyses for the IDC. This is similar to the Comparative Grab Sampling form that we already reviewed. The IDC form includes a place to indicate whether the IDC passed or failed. In order to pass the IDC, the acceptance criterion must be met for 14 consecutive days without calibration adjustment. If the analyzer passes the IDC, it can be used for compliance monitoring or log inactivation calculations. If during the course of the IDC the acceptance criteria is not met, follow-up actions are required. Begin by confirming the result of the GRAB analysis. Repeat the analysis to rule out any issues with the GRAB method. Next, troubleshoot the online analyzer. Make sure there is adequate flow, check whether probe membrane or reagents need to be replaced, clean the sample cell, or replace sample tubing. Then verify the calibration of the handheld or benchtop analyzer used for comparison analysis. Prepare and analyze a primary standard to make sure the calibration has not drifted. Double check reagents and examine and clean sample cells. If no other issues are found, adjust the calibration of the online analyzer. It is important to note that calibration adjustments should only be made when absolutely necessary and after ruling out other potential issues, such as when failure to meet the acceptance criterion is confirmed by repeating the grab analysis, after all equipment, supplies, and reagents have been evaluated, and adjustments should only be made according to manufacturer instructions. Repeat the comparative analysis immediately following analyzer calibration adjustment to verify the accuracy of the calibration. Then repeat the comparative analysis again after 24 hours. If at any time a calibration adjustment is made, the 14-day time frame for the IDC must be restarted. If an analyzer cannot successfully pass the IDC after multiple attempts, it is not appropriate for the specific operating conditions. It will need to be replaced with an analyzer that is appropriate and will pass the IDC. Method 334.0 includes three types of comparative grab sampling calibration checks, routine, non-routine, and emergency. 
the acceptance criteria of plus or minus 0.1 milligram per liter or plus or minus 15% apply to all comparative grab samples. The results of all calibration checks must be documented, regardless of whether they meet the applicable acceptance criteria. For documentation, use the comparative grab sample analysis for online analyzers form, which was discussed in detail earlier. Routine calibration checks should be performed on a regularly scheduled basis. Specifically, Method 334.0 requires routine comparative samples no less frequently than once every seven days. The comparative grab samples conducted immediately following a calibration adjustment and 24 hours following a calibration adjustment are considered routine. Non-routine grab comparison sampling are any calibration checks that occur outside of the routine schedule. These may include checks as a follow-up after maintenance activities have been performed on the analyzer. For example, changing reagent, maintenance of a sample probe, or cleaning the sample cell or housing may affect the analyzer readings. Performing a non-routine check verifies the accuracy of the calibration following these activities. Another situation where non-routine grab samples may be collected is when an online analyzer appears to be drifting significantly from its normal range of readings with no obvious explanation. If there have been no changes in treatment process, chemical feed, or raw water quality that correspond to a noticeable change in chlorine measurements, a non-routine comparative grab sample should be collected. Emergency comparative grab samples are collected when an online analyzer is providing measurements that are cause for immediate concern and should be collected as soon as possible. For example, if an analyzer is indicating a large unexpected change in residual, a deviation of 50% or more from routine observed residuals could be an indicator of a major issue. Drift of this nature may be indicative of an issue with the analyzer itself. A ruptured membrane, depleted reagent, or clogged sample lines can have a significant impact on analyzer operation and accuracy. If the analyzer is functioning properly, significant changes in residual may be a symptom of a critical situation related to plant operation. Problems such as a chemical overfeed, breakdown in treatment, or increased chlorine demand due to a raw water event may have a major impact on measured chlorine residual. Let's review the key points from this video. An initial calibration verification and calibration checks are required components of Method 334.0. The initial calibration verification demonstrates the accuracy of the analyzer prior to use for compliance monitoring or log inactivation calculations. Routine calibration checks verify the accuracy of the analyzer on an ongoing basis. At a minimum, they are required every seven days. Non-routine and emergency calibration checks are required as needed. Use comparative grab sampling that uses an approved method and that has met all of the grab monitoring requirements of Method 334.0. For documentation, use the DEP record keeping form for comparative grab sample analysis for online analyzers. All comparative grab samples should be documented. The analyzer initial demonstration of capability is also a required component of Method 334.0. The IDC assesses the suitability of an analyzer for chlorine residual analysis under specific water quality and operating conditions at a water system. Daily comparative grab samples on a minimum of 14 consecutive days must meet the appropriate acceptance criteria prior to using the analyzer for compliance monitoring or log inactivation calculations. For documentation, use the DEP record keeping form for the IDC for online analyzers. All comparative grab samples for the IDC should be recorded. This form, as well as the other Method 334.0 forms, can be found on DEP's eLibrary. This concludes the video tutorial series on EPA Method 334.0 Expectations for Public Water Systems in Pennsylvania. All eight videos in the series are listed here and are available for review.